Hello. Happy Sunday, or whenever it is, and welcome to another episode of Teats Eats, uh, the show where I have to eat food, and I won't cook it unless somebody watches it. So, say we're making a uh, rice dish. It's a Thai, spicy Thai basil chicken fried rice. Hi, JJ. Welcome in. I made sure to keep StreamerBot open upstairs so that someone could claim that, so I'm glad it was you. <laughs> Hope you're having a good Sunday. Um, but yeah, so I already have all the ingredients like metered out and stuff, so it's gonna be actually be very easy to make. Because essentially you just put all of your stuff in a hot pan and then you're done. Uh, the only thing I learned about this last time I made it was that um, it calls for oil and you can very easily use too much oil. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball out how much oil I use because it calls for normally half a cup of uh, hi girls, hello. <laughs> Screaming high. Um, but yeah, so this normally calls for a lot of oil, which ends up in the dish. My chat widget just got logged out. Hello? I've never seen that before. Well, hopefully that comes back up. Anyway, um, the oil actually ends up in the, in the dish, so it matters how much you use. It's very easy to use too much. June Z A, hey, cheers, man. I don't know why my chat widget is uh, doing this login thing. Hold on. Um, can I? I don't know how to. I might have to shut my chat widget off just because it's being weird. I've never seen this before. That really sucks. Freaking a gen. Yeah, I'm drinking a uh, Ellicottville pretzel bender. I guess. Oh, a Guinness? Yeah, must be hitting you. <laughs> We're gonna see if this chat keeps, uh... Welcome to the chat room, are we sure? Alright, we'll keep an eye- Oh, what? Oh! How do I do this? I don't even know how to, like, interact with it, or whatever. Uh... Interacting with Twitch chat. Yeah, how do I... That's so dumb. I've never had to do that before. Well, anyway, maybe we're not going to be able to use my Twitch chat, Doc, because uh, it's no bueno. <clears throat> we'll just shut that off. I'll have to shut it off over in my other scenes, too. I'm just going to try to connect. That's no good. <clears throat> anyway. So uh, yeah, we're just going to throw together a really easy dish. Um, I already have all the stuff measured up, but we can take a look at what's in it. And uh, really, it just all goes into a hot pan and gets cooked together. So, uh, so it is a Thai, oh, this one. <clears throat> it is a Thai, uh, spicy Thai basil chicken uh, fried rice. So most of the ingredients are in the title, but essentially you need um, some spice, which comes in the form of normally serrano peppers for some reason, but I'm using jalapenos because I have them. Uh, I googled what the best substitute would be and it said those would be fine. It also calls for onions, which I have, red bell peppers, which I don't have, and uh, I put green peppers in this last time and it didn't really make a huge difference to me flavor-wise, so I just figured I'd omit them this time. Um, six cloves of garlic, I eyeballed it. I freeze all my garlic, so I'm hoping this is enough. Um, Rice, which I have chilling in my freezer because I made it just before stream and it's supposed to be cold so that you can fry it up. <clears throat> Chicken, which of course I have across the uh, oven over here, or the stove over here. Uh, there's no seasonings whatsoever to speak of. There's no salt, there's no garlic uh, powder, nothing like that, which I found surprising, but it comes out really good. Um, and you use a peanut oil to fry it in, which itself has a very distinctive flavor. Uh, and then the only sauces you use, which I've already got measured out here, but this is a mixture of uh, granulated sugar, just white table sugar, um, three tablespoons of oyster sauce, and two tablespoons of fish sauce. So this smells disgusting when it's raw, um, and unfortunately it smells even worse as you heat it up, but that's what we're going to have to do here. So steps are real easy. You make rice, you cool it. You mix together your sauce, as I've done already, and you keep it aside. Although I didn't stir it. Maybe I should stir it. 
and you guys can watch me stir it because it's just so exciting. I'm going to use a fork. And this uh, thick, goopy stuff is the oyster sauce. The runnier stuff on the top is the fish, uh, fish sauce, or like fish oil, I guess. And then I actually feel my fork like scraping the bottom where all the sugar is. So just kind of mix it together until we get a nice little sauce that comes together. Now, fish oil or uh, fish sauce and oyster sauce are, are pretty niche ingredients. I don't think you normally have those in your pantry unless you are no stranger to Asian cooking or cooking Asian dishes. Um, oyster sauce, though it sounds as gross as fish sauce, is actually kind of delicious. It's just kind of thick and kind of salty, really. It doesn't actually have a fishy flavor. Fish sauce, on the other hand, um, sounds like it was scraped out of the panties of someone having a rough month. So, uh, I would not suggest... <laughs> eating fish sauce raw, but it does help to like elevate the flavors of a dish, which is what its purpose is here. Um, the oyster sauce kind of does the same thing, but it's a little bit more rich. It kind of adds like a richness to your dish. Um, but yeah, so our steps here are strictly just to mix together the sauce as we've done. We will heat this pan right here up to about a medium heat. And we'll get in our uh, frying oil, which is going to be half a cup about of uh, peanut oil. Now again, the oil ends up in the final dish because it soaks into the rice and the chicken and everything. So uh, if you use too much, you'll taste it. Your, your dish will actually be kind of oily, which isn't a bad thing if you're anticipating it, but a lot of times it's not really a flavor that you're after. So I'm just gonna grab my gallon of peanut oil. And we're gonna just eyeball in about half a uh, half a cup of it as this pan heats up. Now last time I did this half a cup very comfortably coated the bottom. So we'll say about that much. That might be a little bit less than half a cup and that's kind of what I'm after. We'll let that come up to 10. But so the very first step of the recipe says to put in your peppers and garlic ahead of time. Um, and then immediately follow it up with the chicken, your vegetables, and um, the sauce. But I'm not really worried about keeping it all separated because frankly, the only time you ever cook garlic early or like put your garlic in first is if you want it to kind of crisp up and uh, kind of flavor your oil. We're not really doing that. We don't really need to do that. Same with the, the peppers. I don't really know I need to do the peppers first. So I think we'll just chuck everything in at the same time. Um, I also vaguely remember this calling for water for some reason. I think I'm misremembering. I'm just gonna double check. Oyster sauce, fish sauce, sugar, peanut oil, rice, which I have in the freezer, garlic, serrano peppers, which I'm replacing with jalapeno peppers, um, chicken, which is across there, uh, red pepper, which I'm skipping, and onion, which I have on the plate. Basil, which gets added at the very end. We've got basil leaves from my local grocery market here. And that's it. And it says you can put cucumber on it. I don't have cucumber and also cilantro, but I mean, we're already going to go hard with the basil, so we'll just skip that. And of course, whenever you go on these recipe sites, it's always fun to read what people... Uh, have said the very first comment, the most highly rated comment, is someone tweaking the recipe, of course. Added two tablespoons of soy sauce to the oil, pepper, garlic after frying a bit. You should also add fish or oyster sauce at that point before adding the other ingredients or it won't absorb evenly into the food. We're just gonna put everything in at the same time, so that's not really a concern. I also have the oyster and fish sauce since the smell was well terrifying. It sure is, but it adds a lot to the dish, so I'm not worried about that. That amount it added perfectly to the flavor, but wasn't a notable, noticeable or dominant taste at all. It's important to use fresh garlic. I actually freeze my garlic, so it's fresh enough. I also prefer to chop the chicken after slicing, or use ground chicken so it absorbs more of the flavor. I'm not really worried about the chicken being too flavorless, because the dish overall is very potent. So, if you eat a piece of chicken by itself, it might taste a little bland, but I'm not really concerned about that. If I was, I'd probably like marinate the chicken or something. Give it like a soy sauce marinade of some kind or something, but not really necessary, I find. So we're just gonna wait for that oil to heat up and then we'll literally toss everything in. And I'm hoping 
that our sauce here will uh, be easy enough to mix in. This person said, the hardest thing I found about the recipe was finding the Thai basil, because it's different from Italian basil. I'm using Italian basil because I don't really notice that big of a difference or really care about the difference. Uh, you can substitute stir fry or wide rice noodles for the rice if you prefer. I love jasmine rice, so we're just using jasmine rice. If you use wide rice noodles, it's best to chop them up a bit so they absorb the flavor. Yeah, we're not doing that. So this person just modified some kind of basic stuff that I don't really think is necessary. Um, but yeah, I agree. The smell of this fish sauce is disgusting. But it's because of the nature of the fish sauce and not because there's anything wrong with it. Uh, the ingredients involved are just kind of gross. But yeah, so this is a very hands-off recipe. I'm realizing now that it's probably not even worth watching. The most exciting part of this was maybe me dicing up my jalapeno peppers, but I just used a fork. Uh, I turned a fork on its side and just like crushed them because they're soft, you know, so you could just cut them that way. Uh, but yeah, the rice I made ahead of time because we're supposed to chill it. Plus, there's nothing really to watch with uh, <laughs> cooking rice. Um, my chicken I just cut up into strips and then I cut those strips into strips the other way. So it's basically just like quartering chicken or, uh, you know, turn into one inch chunks. Again, the chicken doesn't get seasoned at all. I'm absolutely, I'm absolutely shocked by that. Um, I'm tempted to put something like salt on it, but I know that the sauce is, is salty on its own. And uh, I might just salt the rice after it's all done because frankly, it's a lot of rice. I'm using six cups of rice. The recipe calls for four. But just in anticipation of how strong the fishy flavor is of this sauce and the fact that it's very oily, I'm just trying to counter it with more rice and a little bit less oil. Um, I actually made this last week as well. I didn't stream it though. Uh, I just used my leftover white rice from, I got Chinese with my grandparents and took home all the uh, leftovers. So I just ended up using that white rice and made this dish before and I thought this is a fun recipe to share with people Especially if they get Thai takeout and they don't know how to make it at home uh, I find this is really easy to make because you just throw all your ingredients in one place and cook it on up And you got some nice spicy delicious food Did you see I had you at jalapenos? Yeah Yeah um, Again, it normally calls for serrano peppers, which I've never had but I guess jalapenos are close enough of a substitute I obviously just substitute all my food when we cook here because I never have anything that the recipes call for, which is fun. Um, but yeah, so I have no idea if this oil is hot. It is shimmering and actually smoking a little bit, so I'm going to say that's hot enough. So yeah, the first step is, again, normally just to put in your um, garlic and your peppers, which I guess we could do. My peppers are very watery, though, so I, I fear that this is going to splatter a bit. So we've got our protective little whatever you want to call this, uh, cover. And uh, I'm just going to use this kind of sparingly as we put this in. So again, I guess we could put every, put the garlic and stuff in to start. I really don't really see the need for that, but we'll see how dangerous this, dangerous this is. my jalapeno peppers and garlic going in. You can already see the garlic is getting lighter immediately. This is why I don't normally put it in that early because it's very easy to overcook your garlic. And then the follow-up step is just to add your vegetables, which I only have onions. Again, the recipe calls for red bell peppers, which I didn't have, and the green bell peppers I have, I just decided to omit because it didn't really add all that much to the dish. You get a little bit of extra flavor, but that's it. Not really a necessary component in my eyes. That's our onions going in. And then we also have to add the sauce and the chicken at this point, and then cook until our chicken is cooked. I think it will add salt at this stage, actually. We'll just put in, uh, I have a Goya kind of salt mixture. Well, let me move the camera closer to the action here. Um, yeah, I guess I don't need this lid, which is nice. Lids are kind of cumbersome to deal with. Uh, so yeah, we'll add our chicken and our sauce next. So I'll do the sauce. Oop, I'll do the sauce first. I jostled it a little, picking it up. So now my cupboard's gonna smell like fish for a year. This looks like half a cup of sauce, but frankly, I just measured it into a half a cup measuring cup because I used a half a cup last time to make oil, and uh, I put it in the half cup, and it basically filled the half cup, which I found was pretty nice. 
put this nasty, stanky sauce in as it heats up, and it's going to just absolutely annihilate my eyes and my nostrils. It's just the nature of it. And then we'll toss our chicken in. And then I'll clean my counter, because I biffed it. Here's our chicken. We'll just slide that in with the same uh, ladle here. It actually looks like these oh fuck. I'm getting out of that sauce. Uh, it looks like these ingredients actually cooled off the pan a little bit, so I'm gonna cook, uh, knock my heat up to five from three. And then, yeah, I need to clean this poor, poor counter. I really hope I didn't drip on the floor, because that's disgusting. I'm actually just wiping it with my hand, because it's goopy enough to stick to my hand, primarily. And then I have a paper towel waiting in the wing to help. I'm gonna stir that up in a sec. I'm just kind of getting uh, situated otherwise. But yeah, so the recipe says to cook this until your chicken is no longer pink. Of course, we're basically boiling it because we're cooking it in oils and a bunch of watery vegetables. Onion, you know, has a lot of water content. Um, garlic doesn't really, but mine was frozen, so it might. And then uh, the peppers are usually pretty watery too. Especially pickled jalapenos like I'm using, but that's okay. I think I am going to toss some uh, salt mixture into this. So like I said, I have a salt and pepper Goya seasoning. Adobo seasoning, all-purpose seasoning. It's basically just salt with some extra shit in it. Salt, garlic, black pepper, oregano, and turmeric. So I just use it as a salt substitute for a lot of dishes. We'll just put a teeny, teeny bit in. Actually, it won't be that teeny because uh, the rice doesn't have any seasoning on it. Just a quick little layering of it. And then we'll stir it in. And then the last thing to add is my so-called chilled rice. But, uh, spoiler alert, I don't think it's all that chilled. I just made it maybe 20 minutes prior to stream. It's been sitting in my freezer because I was hoping the freezer would drop its temperature down faster than just putting it in the fridge or leaving it out. Um, I think normally when you make rice and you use rice for a dish like this, you would just use something that you keep in the refrigerator, like after making it one night and then uh, keeping it in the fridge after you have leftovers. But of course, I didn't have this leftover, I just made the, the rice fresh. So hopefully, it's gonna have chilled enough sitting in the freezer. But I don't wanna check it until the very last second. But yeah, so this is like 90% of the work. The rice is already cooked, the chicken and stuff is already cut, and uh, we're just going to let it kind of come together. You see it's actually steaming, so a lot of the moisture that was in the chicken and is in the vegetables is going to come out as part of this. And we'll slowly, slowly watch our chicken boil. We'll slowly, slowly smell the vaginal scent of a fish sauce mixture, just coat my entire house. <laughs> but we'll just count that as... Uh, incorporating flavor into our otherwise bland chicken. So the outside of the chicken's already kind of losing its color, it's turning white, boiled white, you know. But I keep cooking a bit. But yeah, so this dish is really easy to make. Uh, it's not often I find dishes that don't require any multi-step doing of things, you know. Like, I guess you could have left the uh, onions and pepper in, or the garlic and pepper, rather. You could let that cook for a little bit, but again, I don't really see the need. You don't really need to crisp up garlic in a dish like this, because its flavor kind of gets hidden behind the fish and oyster sauce. And uh, yeah, the peppers, I don't really know why you'd need to crisp up the peppers all that much either. Most of the flavor is just meant to go into the oil and then the oil into the rice. So any bite of rice you have will taste like your spicy peppers and taste like your uh, fishy sauce. Same with your chicken, I guess. Your chicken kind of gets those flavors imparted into it as well. But you might notice as I stir this, if you look at the very edge of this, there's a very obvious, like, extra liquid in here. And that's the oil. There's just an abundance of oil. Uh, which is intentional, it's meant to soak into the rice, but I find if there's too much, um, you can taste it in the end result. And I, I don't really like that, because it just kind of tastes slimy, you know? 
Or oily, I guess. Not that oil is bad for you, it's just like the flavor is very slippery, you know? So we'll see how much it soaks into the rice. We'll also note that this is a quote unquote fried rice dish where the rice doesn't actually get fried in anything like an egg. Uh, it's strictly the oil that's going to fry this rice. So in preparation of that, I'm actually just going to move all of my chicken to the edges here. I'm going to let the moisture from the middle bubble off for a little bit. And I suppose I'll go check my rice and see how we're feeling. might be chilled enough. Chilled to the point of being uh, like crispy on the top actually. Some of it actually dried out, but that's okay. It's a very moist dish, so I'm not really worried about that. I just had this chilling on a tray with some plastic wrap on it, just so that it would be easier to clean up and kind of gather up. But normally when you have leftover rice in the fridge, you don't need to do all this. This was just kind of an impromptu, uh, you know, speed it up step going to expedite this, but I'm just going to fold the rice into itself a bit to kind of mix it back up, and then honestly we'll just pour it right in, chop it up, and uh, see if we can't get it to incorporate. This is kind of the best I can do without actually stirring it, and frankly I don't care enough about it to stir it, so I'll stir it once we get it into the pan. Probably just tempted to season it too, but I don't think that'll be necessary. Give this another stir so the ingredients on the side don't get too stagnant. Even when you have a bunch of liquid like this, you can have things kind of stick to the bottom and burn. So having everything piled up on the sides like this, I want to make sure that I give it a nice little stir to incorporate everything. I think we've had this boiling up for quite a while. Our chicken's definitely cooked by now. So we'll go ahead and toss the rice in. Uh, which I guess I'll do by hand. No place doesn't splash on me too much, but. Yeah, this rice is actually chilly. I'm surprised by this. Boiled it a very not long time ago. Now this is going to definitely fill my pan because this is six cups of rice. The recipe only calls for four. But uh, one, whenever recipes call for cups of rice, I never know if they mean cooked or not cooked. And of course, rice always uh, doubles in size as you cook it because of course you use twice the amount of water content to rice and it gets absorbed. So four cups of rice could either be two uncooked cups of rice plus two cups of water, or um, four uncooked cups of rice and four cups of water, totaling eight cups. I'm assuming it's four cooked cups of rice. Now I don't remember if the recipe says, uh, you know, cooked, but that's the rice in. Now I just need to uh, mix it all up. Mix it all in. So I use my trusty ladle for everything. It's good for stirring, it's good for chopping, it's good for mixing. Well, I guess stirring and mixing are the same. I'm just gonna use it to kind of push the rice down into what's already there and kind of use it to pull whatever's on the bottom above the rice a little bit. And I guess I'll use it to uh, backhand shovel some rice into the abyss next to my stove. This rice is ice cold. I think this is why they tell you to boost the uh, heat here, because your chilled rice is going to kind of calm this down a bit. But that's okay. We're also going to leave this on here for quite a while as I stir and incorporate everything. We don't really want it to burn while I do this. See, my ingredients are still kind of stuck to the edges here. The goal is to kind of just move everything toward the middle. Pull it in the middle to the edges. Kind of like the circle things from either the middle out or vice versa, the inside, inside or outside in. 
we'll see what we get as we keep doing this. Might cut that down a little too much. Thankfully it looks like I didn't use too much oil this time. I don't really see it pulling up or coating everything excessively. Still very much present, but I don't think it'll be, you know, too noticeable at the end. Now dishes like this are always a workout for my wrist because I just feel myself stirring, stirring, stirring constantly, gripping this thing super tight since it's got such a narrow handle. I'm just like forcefully pushing down. Constantly stirring. It actually looks like a ton of uh, chicken, which I'm surprised by, because it was only three breasts. And I think those breasts were actually cut in half before I uh, stored them. But a little looks like it went a long way. But this is really about it. Um, you know, I'm gonna maybe cut the heat off because it sounds like it's starting to stick a little bit. The residual heat will continue to heat it up as we stir it. And my goal usually when I make this is to just try and stir it until I stop seeing perfectly white grains of rice. It's gonna be a little bit difficult because of how the rice kind of clumps together. But I basically will just try and pull and focus on individual chunks of rice and then cut them up to see if they don't separate and uh, mix back together with some more color getting added to the previously hidden bits of rice. Whoops, a little overzealous stirring there. It actually does still taste a little bit oily. Oh, and very spicy. Maybe I went a little heavy-handed with the jalapenos here, but that's okay. The only thing I find difficult when it asks for certain measurements of things that I have pre-cut is, uh, you know, if it says two cloves of garlic, but I have all my garlic minced, I don't really know what two cloves looks like. There's usual measurements, like a teaspoon or whatever, but I don't know. Whenever something says two jalapeno peppers, two serrano peppers, two tomatoes, two whatever, and I have everything diced, I usually just kind of guess. Really no harm in guessing at recipes if the ingredients are just part of a final mixture. It's a little bit different if they affect the outcome, you know, but really the only effect that my peppers are going to have on this is how spicy it tastes. And frankly, I like spicy foods, so if I overdid it with the peppers a little bit, not really the end of the world. So it looks like we're kind of thinning out when it comes to the... Um, whiteness of the rice here. So I am just going to dust this with some basil. Again, this is supposed to be some Thai basil. That's what the one commenter said, but I use Italian basil just because it's all they sell at my store. And frankly, I don't really know how different it can be. You know, it's just an aromatic uh, herb of certain family. I can't imagine that it's going to be all that different using Italian over uh, Asian. But of course, I've never really used or Thai basil. So... Hopefully this will do the trick. So we're just going to chop and stir this in. This will also further incorporate uh, our rice together. But this is a, a, a little bit of, this is essentially the final dish, the finalized dish. So my heat is turned off right now. I think that it's actually kind of boiled off a lot of the moisture. I might have left it on there a little bit too long. But I really didn't want it to be too oily. I wanted to make sure everything was like nice and cooked through. Our chicken was nice and boiled, I guess. Yeah, there we go. I smell the nice fishy, spicy aroma of this. I can actually smell that basil coming on through too. Now again, it does say that you can garnish this with a cucumber. I don't buy cucumbers because I'm not really a big fan of them in general. Although the cucumber is a nice addition to this dish because of how spicy it is. Normally when I get this at Thai restaurants, um, it's usually called uh, Gapow fried rice or Gapow, I don't know how it's pronounced. It's called G-A-P-O-W. Um, but it's the same exact dish, Thai basil, the spicy Thai basil rice. And uh, they serve with big old fat chunks of cucumber. And honestly, with how spicy this dish is bite to bite, the cucumber is a nice little moment of respite because it has 
some, uh, I think it's either fatty or just the way that the vegetable is in general. It just kind of cuts the heat and it kind of acts as like a little safe abyss from too much heat. But I generally don't like cucumber. I don't eat it on salads. I don't, you know, people offer it to me from their gardens because they grow it here and I just never use it. Not a fan of the, the general flavor or texture of it. I know there's like a lot of sweet dishes and stuff that people make with cucumber. I've never come around to it. I don't like the texture or the flavor. I remember last year, or maybe the year prior when I was streaming, um, I had a cucumber flavored seltzer water, alcoholic seltzer, and uh, man, it was a struggle to drink that. I just don't like real cucumber or artificial cucumber, as it turns out. But this usually calls for cucumber as a garnish and also cilantro for some reason. Um, I find that odd. So I just let the basil and the sauce do the work. But this is the finalized dish. Now I do still see little tufts of white. I guess that's going to happen just given how clumped together this rice was. I did rinse my rice today. That's one thing I almost never do and people get mad at me for it and I think that's hilarious. Um, I just don't really see the difference when I rinse my rice and when I don't because it's still very sticky clumped together rice. Artificial cucumbers are awful, JJ. Yeah, I agree. That, uh, that alcoholic seltzer I had a couple years ago was just so, so bad. I couldn't really find anything else. I don't think I've ever had an alcoholic drink that was as nasty as that. Which is saying something, because that was a pretty much a budget batch of different, um, seltzers. I think they had, like, a lemon one, a lime one, that, and a pomegranate. And, like, the lime and lemon, lemon almost tastes like medicine. And pomegranate, I'm just not really a big fan of. So overall, it was a, a 0 out of 10 pack, but of the four of them, the cucumber was the hardest one to suffer through. Rids my mouth out of that memory using a pretzel beer. But that's it. That's the dish. We're going to uh, move on over here, and we're going to serve it up and have a little bit. Hopefully, it's not too like physically hot that I burn my face trying to, trying to eat it. I'm also going to rinse off my plate because it had all my uh, veggies and juices on it. We'll just serve some of this up. Now I eat a lot of this in one sitting, so I'll probably have to make more than just a single plate of it, but we'll do four little ice cream scoopers of rice and then we'll chop it up. Should really cover the whole plate. Now I need a little bit more. There we go. Should I uh, should I garnish this plate with cilantro? It even makes a difference. I kind of don't want to bother. But there we go. Wherever it is, it's on a plate now. Ooh wee. I'm gonna cover this up because I think it might be steaming and I don't want any of the moisture to leave. But here we are. Here's the food. It smells so good. Very hot though. See it's steaming away. Down the hatch, I guess. Burn my tongue, I guess. Cheers. Ooh, yeah, okay. I think I nailed this, adding more rice and less uh, oil. Definitely doesn't taste oily. You can tell it's actually kind of sticky still, which is, you know, probably not great for the texture, but I'd rather have it be sticky like this and almost a little dry than have it be oily. I'm not a real, real big fan of the uh, extra oil I tend to get in this when I make it. But this dish is uh, fantastic. If you just like, if you like rice dishes for one, and you like spice, and I guess chicken flavor, it's just a very um, kind of rich, spicy rice dish. It, it mostly just tastes like rice, but it's got a little bit of a subtle, uh, fishy, spicy heat to it, and uh, chicken. So, absolutely delicious, super easy. I've had the recipe posting in chat. It's on all recipes. Thai spicy basil chicken fried rice. It's delicious, and it's super easy to make. 
And, uh, you know, if you're like me and you don't buy serrano peppers um, or bell peppers, you can live without it. Uh, or just swap in, as I did, uh, jalapeno peppers. And it's still nice and hot, nice and spicy, and so good. But I guess that's it. This is kind of a really short teat teats, but I mean, you know, sometimes when I make easy dishes, that's all there is to it, so. I don't think I need to make all of you sit here and watch me eat this whole plate and then another, because that's probably what's gonna happen. But I definitely implore you to uh, try this yourself, because it's very good and very easy, very quick. I feel like I wasn't in here all that long, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't think I can see my runtime in uh, OBS, but I feel like this was under an hour, and I was drawing a lot of it out, so. But that's it. If you're eating dinner, I hope you're having something good. Appreciate you pulling up a plate with me. But we are going to find somewhere to go. Because I'm going to go sit down and eat and put the TV on and have a good time. Let's see who's live. Well, I continue to shovel this in my face because it's so good I'm addicted. Who we got? Who we got? Who we got? Who we got? Oh boy, we got a ton of people on. Let's go over to... I mean, Brian, I guess. It's his two-year streaming anniversary. I don't think he's doing anything special for it. But why would you, you know? I'm kidding. I have mine uh, coming up soon. So I'll probably do the same thing. But, uh... How the heck do I... Can I see my own chat? Is that possible? Whispers? No. Whatever, we'll just do it from the computer. Kyle Lee, hi, welcome in. Unfortunately, we're all done, so we're raiding now. But I hope you're having a good night. We're gonna go raid our buddy, Mr. Brian in Bottles, who's playing Fortnite and is uh, celebrating two years on Twitch. How's the rice? It came out fantastic. Um, if you want to check out the recipe, it's on allrecipes.com. Look up kind of the title of this stream. It's spicy t uh, Thai basil chicken fried rice. It came out so good. I'm gonna go and inhale a plate. Um, we're gonna go say hi to our buddy Ryan, uh, Brian. So thank you all so much for watching. If you want to watch the uh, VOD for this, it'll be up on Twitch for about a week. And uh, I've also been posting them all on my YouTube channel. Uh, let's try typing that again because I misspelled it. There we go. So yeah, Brian's playing some uh, Fortnite. He plays a lot of Fortnite, but he's very chatty, very kind, very funny. Uh, good close friend of the channel, and he's celebrating two years on Twitch, like I said. So let's go send him some love. Everybody go say hi. Talk about how much fun you had over here. And uh, we'll do this again soon. Maybe with a dish that takes longer to make so we can truly enjoy it, you know? But if you hung out and watched, thank you so much. We'll hopefully see you in the next one. Have a great night. Bye now. I keep waving goodbye, but I, I want to make sure the raid goes through. Okay, I think it did. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.